Hello, my name is Jen and welcome to the Book Refuge and welcome to vlog number two in rereading my 2021 favorites, which are those books all turned backwards right there. So as I said in the end of the last one, if you watch that, I'll have that linked up here. I am planning to have this vlog focus on the historical romance readathon and reread most of my historical romances that I have to reread, which is that stack right there. So that's going to be my goal for this vlog is to read it, reread as many of those as I can. Um, this, uh, the historical romance readathon is hosted by Jess from Peace Love Books, Lacey from Lacey Book Lovers, and Lisa from Remarkably Lisa. And I actually took two of their Instagram forms and I I printed them <laughs> side by side so that I, this is going to go into my reading journal, but I just haven't pasted it in there yet. So I have the bingo board and then I have the books that I'm planning to read, which I can just show you guys. Um, also, as I um, said in the last one, I will have my grand list of all of my favorites, which is this right here. Those little circles are the ones I've read so far. Um, linked in the description. These are all, uh, I think there's 33 books that I gave six stars in the, in the year of 2021 and I'm rereading them. Um, there may be some books in this vlog that aren't the historicals because like right now I am almost done rereading Real by Kennedy Ryan. Why is Kennedy Ryan so amazing? Like she's just so good. I love this couple so much. So there are a few others. I'm also planning to do carnal urges pretty soon too because I'm starting this vlog a day early since I'm home and um, it finally started snowing. This probably won't but because I have my blinds done but um, we got a good last night and yeah. I'm planning to do some reading sprints on my channel today. Um, I hopefully will have a guest with me, but she messaged me that she wasn't feeling great this morning, so we'll see how she feels later. But I'm planning to um, get some more of my December planned, um, as well as discovering what my goals are going to be for next year, because I don't know what I should do, if I should even really have any goals. And I don't just mean the reading goal, I mean the type of stuff I'm going to read or what because I don't know I really like to be kind of free and easy with what I read but okay anyway the books that I'm planning to do for the uh, rereading let me see also I think there is this one Meow. my books are getting bent Oh, my Christmas. There we go. I'll do that for now. So, um, the ones that I have. And then what I did is, like, I probably won't have a blackout bingo board this time. Just because I'm not going to try to push myself with them. But maybe some that I don't think I'll have will also show up. So, what I actually did is I listed all the books and I gave them a different shape. And then I used that shape, like, on the bingo board. It's cute, okay? I'm cute. So, the books I'm planning to reread is Annie's Song, uh, Dev The Dev Devil's Bride, Devil in Disguise, Dangerous, Midnight Pleasures with a Scoundrel. So, actually, this one, this one I didn't write down on the list. So, this one might not be the priority, but I'm just showing you all the historicals I have to reread. Um, Bound to a Warrior and Never Seduce a Scott. And then, oh, also there's Eyes of Silver, Eyes of Gold, which also isn't on the list. And then there is one book that I have that is the, a readathon book. It's not, oh, oh. And then, like, the book for the readathon that's like the group book is actually Lady Sophie's Christmas Wish. Um, and so I might try to read this one because I've actually owned this one for quite a while because this book is actually in a series by Grace Burroughs that I love the first two books in the series and then I just over the years never continued it. Um, the first books in the series are about the Wyndham 
sons. And then the rest of the series is about the Wyndham daughters, the Duke's daughters. So I thought it'd be cool if I end up being in the mood for this. If I only end up doing my rereads, that's just how it is. Like those are more of my goal and my plan because I think I put seven. I put seven on this list. Which ones? I put these seven like actually on my TBR and my goal is to like read one of them per day um, via audio because I do have access to the audiobooks for all of these books. And usually an audiobook of these takes me like four to five hours and I can listen while I'm at work. So for the readathon, that's going to be my goal is to do that. Eyes of Silver, Eyes of Gold, again, is not on my official TBR and I don't have an audiobook for this. And then um, we'll just see. So anyway, that's my plan. Um, this vlog, like I said, I will include other stuff. It won't just be the, for the historical romance readathon, but that's going to be my goal. And I'm very excited to see how these ones like play out for me. Um, I cannot, I cannot wait. I love it. But yeah, so this will be vlog number two. Um, I'm assuming I'll have probably three or four of these. It just depends on how much I get read and like how long they are because like the vlog that I the first vlog I filmed I think I'm having it go up tomorrow and that was like three weeks worth because I started it early and now that I'm into December I really kind of got to crack into it because like some of these books are really big okay like some of these books are pretty ginormous and I don't have audiobooks for all of them so it could definitely get into a crunch time and I think part of it is too is like I don't have to finish these in December like my favorites of 2021 video doesn't have to go up on December 31st you know like I'm probably gonna finish my other end of the month stuff and then have it go up but you know I do want to finish it if I can so anyway I don't know which one I want to start with so yeah, I'm going to finish real. And then, like I said, I really want to read Carnal Urges maybe before the readathon starts. But maybe I'll just put these all on a spinner wheel and we'll spin and see what we get. You know, like maybe that's what I want to do um, to help me decide which one I do. I haven't used a spinner wheel in a while because I've been pretty good at making up my own mind. But anyway, okay, that's going to be the starting clip. And I'm going to put these all back on my shelf again. And yeah. Okay, we'll talk soon. Hello. So, oops. Can't get this in my uh, little tripod there. Um, it is time to do a check-in, okay? So, making some great progress for the readathon already. Um, but I do want to quick talk about the other non-historical that I read. So, I decided to read Carnal Urges before... Um, diving into historicals since yesterday was Sunday. We well, you know this. I started to vlog a day early. Um, sorry, the lighting is crap. This is how it is right now. But I ended up listening to Carnal Urges. I have the audiobook for this one. And guys, this one might be my favorite of the year. Um, because I ranked this book when I finished it last night. And this one currently has a 48 out of 50 which is three more points than still had. And I think, God, this book, you guys, it's so tough. And I think the best way to explain it is to like go through my five, um, my like five things that I'm judging, right? I'm judging emotional punch, which I gave this one a nine out of 10 for. Um, I just really love as we peel back the layers of Sloane, who just seems slow, unflappable, and no care in the world, and she's willing to take down as many gangsters as she comes up against, and she just seems so happy, and she is um, just free with her body and free with her joy, and she just seems so amazing. And then she comes up against Declan, this man who has so much on his shoulders he is like a he, oh he has so much going on and when he gets sent to pick up this woman because she's getting her nose in the middle of crap that she shouldn't have he doesn't want her anywhere near him because 
It's just not working. And <laughs> the more that they're like forced into a space to each other, you just watch them both just chip away mutually at each other and on so many levels. So, and there are some absolute beautiful emotional moments in this book. There are some just devastating things that happen. Like one of them is one of the moments that I, um, okay, I just had to stop because it was taking me forever to find it. I have so many notes that I took when I was reading this last night. I'm just all over. So there's this really beautiful moment where she has just shared her like whole heart with him. Well, not her whole heart, but a big part of her heart about how she's feeling about everything. And he literally just like cannot speak. He, he cannot speak. And so she's like, Oh my God, you can't even come up with anything to say to me after I just vomited my heart all over the place. Let me up. I'm leaving. Squirming with humiliation, I try to rise, but I'm flattened beneath his enormous weight. He grasps my jaw and holds my head steady and then says gruffly into my ear, what you just said is the best thing anyone has ever said to me in my life the bloody best thing. And I know I'll be thinking about it for the rest of my days. Long after you've forgotten me, you're young and beautiful and you've got dozens of men in your future who will fall madly in love with you. Hundreds. I have hundreds at least. And I'll be nothing but a distant memory for you. And I'll still be trying to scrub your face and your taste and your sweet voice from my mind 50 years from now because I already know nothing else will ever be able to compare to you. Nothing and no one will ever come close. It's so good. Like, that's just one part. I mean, honestly, I could regurgitate the whole thing to you. You just got to read it for yourself. It's amazing. So then um, the plot set up and can't put down this is a 10 for me. Um, the spice scale, this one is a perfect 10 for me. This one has everything. It has the actual spiciness level. It has the amount of spiciness. It has the emotional spiciness. It has all the elements that I'm looking for to give something like a five chili pepper, which in this case equals the 10 out of 10 on my spice scale. The character development, nine out of 10. Love it. And the conflict and resolution is a 10 out of 10 for me. The way that this book is set up and executed is amazing. All of the books in this series are, but particularly this one is amazing to me. So this book is currently winning besides Outlander. As we said, Outlander will be the winner, but <laughs> for the ones being judged, this one is currently winning. And there's only a couple other books that I think will even come close to this one. So we may be looking at the winner here. I don't know, but I marked the shit out of this book last night. So anyway, onto the historicals. So I spun a wheel um, for my, I put it on my Instagram. And the first book that won was Dangerous by Minerva Spencer. This is one I actually only just read back in October. Um, and I was so excited to read it. I didn't really think this one was going to be in the top, top. But it was really fun. This one is pretty spicy. I marked... I always mark the um, sex scenes in here so I can compare it to the other ones and everything. But I love this couple so much. In case you don't know, this one is about Lady Mia, who she used to be a in a harem. She was in a sultan's harem for 14 or 17 years. How many years was it? I don't know, but it was a very long time. And so she's finally back in England and her father is trying to marry her off. That's right. She was taken when she was 14 and now she's seven. She was gone for 17 years. So she is, I think like 33, 34 years old. And she had a son with this Sultan who is now kind of in danger because he's in a power struggle for control. And she wants to, well, she needs to marry a husband because her father is like going to make her but she wants to marry someone that it can be a marriage of convenience and she'll be able to um, just leave him behind and go back to be with her son. Um, and then she meets Adam to Courtney, who his first two wives died under mysterious circumstances. So he's called the murdering Marquis. And they both meet at a ball that her father is hosting to try to find her a husband. But also they are immediately seriously attracted to each other. It's fucking amazing. 
and they just though they like rub at each other like there's so much it's not so much like misunderstanding but there's so much like a little bit of jumping to conclusions in this book but the way that it's written it works for me so well because of the way because of the reasons behind why they're jumping to conclusions that's the thing Minerva Spencer has their characters built so well that you understand why they're jumping to the conclusions that they do and they even admit that too which is very like they're very self-aware of the fact that the past that they've lived is causing them to jump to conclusions that they wouldn't otherwise have jumped to and again they have this amazing sexual chemistry and they just really like each other as well um but Mia will eventually have to like choose whether she just continues to be happy being married to this man and giving him an heir and being the stepmother to his three daughters or if she will go back for her son. So this was a wonderful reread. I finished this all in one sitting basically at work today. It went by really fast. I don't remember it going that quickly. So then I spun the wheel again and I got Devil in Disguise. So I'm only in the second chapter of this one, but I'm so excited. I've already read this one twice because I read it when it came out. And then um, I reread it right before we did it for um, Rake Appreciation Society. We did this back in, I think, August. It was our August book. And I've actually already annotated this one, so I'm excited to just listen to that. So I'm getting a little bit of work done and watching some YouTube, and then I'm going to take a bubble bath and listen to this. So yeah, so we're good. So I will check in with you later and let you know how it's going. Hello. So we're going to get to books that I've read more of, but first we're going to start with some mail time because... There's two things in my mailbox that I had been waiting to get. And then there was four things that I was not expecting. So I'm very excited about this. Also, I finally got in my Christmas stamps. Jeez, I wanted to send these out a while ago. But I ordered because I was like, oh, geez, it's from UPS. I'll get it in like a day or two. Wrong. It took five days to get what I could have went to the post office to get, but I thought it'd be quick. But either way, I got these cute little otters. And then I got some global stamps because I have some international viewers that I'm sending these to. And I'm so sorry if they take a while to get to you because I'm irritated with my postal service. So you'll be getting season greetings, hopefully in December, but you know, it could be February and I'm sorry. But anyway, Let's start with the one that I know what it is. Um, I ordered some more merch from Sophie Lark's store because I just love that she has character merch. And I'm going to be rereading some of her books in these vlogs. And so I wanted some of her merch to use for photos with them. And so I already have, like, I have an Ivan mug and I have a Raylan sweatshirt. And I ordered... I ordered a Raylan mug. Oh my gosh. Which says, of course, let me take you to the barn. Oh, my precious baby. I have to get the sticker off of this and then maybe I'll drink some whiskey out of this later. But oh, my sweet baby angel. I'm so excited. Also, you know, I'm obsessed with cowboys. Okay. So then I have a sweet little Christmas letter from Brie. I am one of her uh, channel members. Ooh, she sent me some cute stickers. This one says, all is fair in love and words, which is, it's super shiny, but I'm very excited. And proud romance booktuber, spreading love one H-E-A at a time. That is so cute. Put this on my computer. And she's just so sweet. I will save that little card for myself because it makes me so happy, but... Thank you so much, Brie. I can't wait. And then this one, I do actually think I know who this is from. It's from uh, Headsets and Handcuffs, which I believe this is an Etsy. It, yes, this is from Etsy. And one of my best friends asked me, hey, did you get this certain thing? And I was like, no. And she's like, haha, well, it's coming. Um, because she was wondering if it was going to get delivered. And so I'm excited. <laughs> it's so cute. She sent me a rip sticker. It says send rip. 
Oh my God, I'm so excited. This is perfect. This is perfect to add to my like cowboy display because I also have a sweatshirt, another sweatshirt coming that has Raylan on, or Raylan. I mean, yes, that's his name, but I always think I'm saying like Raylo when I say Raylan. Let me see if there's anything else. No. Nope. Yay, it just says thank you so much for your purchase. So I'll have to show my bestie that I did get it. I'm so excited. I don't know where to put that. I'm like running out of room on my computer. I'll have to put it on one of my notebooks. Okay, and then we have some packages that I assume are books and are probably from my Amazon wish list and I'm hyped to see what they are. So it's the first one. Oh, whoa, okay, okay. Yes, I'm so happy about this. Oh my God, it's from Jess. Uh, Jessica, thank you so much. Uh, Merry early Christmas. I haven't heard about this one, but it looks good. I hope you enjoy it. So I did put a few things on my list that I haven't read before. Christmas is the time when I'll do that because I think that like if some of my viewers have read, you know, I put some that are recommended and I wanted to read more Talia Hibbert. And this one I think is a plus size heroine. Um, and she has um, diabetes and she's like losing weight to get healthier and I just I really want to read that obviously so this is um undone by the ex-con so I'm so excited to do that um yeah because I just think that's so unique there aren't a lot of books about people who are either like pre-diabetic or about to be um and are wanting to make the change which is what I've done something I'm still will be working towards but thank you Jessica it's so beautiful oh I was hoping some people would send me those Tally Hibberts because I definitely want to read more first and then this see who this is from yes oh my god thank you let me see who this is from oh Carrie I fucking love you I fucking love you Carrie she says, you bring so much joy to all of us and you normalize the taboo reads. I love you, Carrie. Oh, yeah. Sorry, I'll show you what she sent me. Oh, she sent me the beautifully cruel duet. Oh, I'm so happy. I'm so happy. I freaking love this duet. It is fun to, to, to like look at JT Geisinger's older cover. Sorry, I'll hold them up. So... Beautifully Cruel is, um, this one's about Liam Black, and then this one's his brother, Killian Black. Um, and if you read, um, the Queens and Monsters series, you will have seen Killian pop up. And Killian actually pops up in a series before his, because it goes the Dangerous trilogy, the Dangerous Beauty trilogy, which I'm currently reading. And then it goes these ones, and then it goes Queens and Monsters. And Killian shows up in all of those. But, um, his actual book is this one. So Carrie, thank you so much. Oh, I'm so excited. I thank you, Jess. This is so pretty. And I have stickers and Raylan mug and I'm so excited. So let's talk about the books that I finished because then um, I just put my food to cook up there and I have to be a good girl. But oh, Christmas presents make me so happy. I'm so excited. All right. And I don't need those receipts because I'm fucking keeping them. Um, but anyway, as I was saying, sometimes for Christmas is when I will, that's loud, put some books on my list that I haven't necessarily read, but I'm wanting to try and, you know, if someone else will buy it for me, that will be exciting. So, okay. So I finished Devil in Disguise last night. I loved it so much. Where is it? It's probably, well, not, it's probably going to remain the highest rated historical in my list. It didn't quite get as high as some of the other books though. So at the end of this vlog, when I show you the updated list, you might be a little surprised, but <sighs> the thing that it misses on, and I knew that this would be an issue just because it's hard to rate books from all different subgenres sub on a scale that will work. Because the one that this misses on is the spice scale. Because the way that I'm breaking down chili peppers, which I, I have five chili peppers and then I broke that down into 10, you know, for half star, for half chili ratings to, anyway, to rate it. Like, it is very hard for the historical romances I love to hit a five on the spice scale because 
that's just not how they're written. And I wouldn't want it to be. Like, I don't, I don't want this book to be written the same way that Carnal Urges is. That's not the story that's being told. But when I go based on like, okay, this is how I give it two, three, four chili peppers. It is based on the language that's used, the number of sex scenes, the positions in the sex scenes. And that like, that's how I'm writing that. So I try to have that like be like based on if it's like a historical like what I consider a five for a spice of a historical would probably be different than a five for you know a mafia book which would need to be a lot raunchier to get to that but even still like dangerous which I read um the other day that is definitely a higher spice level than this one is this one had a greater emotional punch than dangerous did but you know that's how it works out. So this is my highest rated historical on my reread so far, but um, there's some other books still ahead of it, which is okay. I mean, I'm trying to determine my top 10. There's no way in heck that this book isn't in the top 10. I just don't know where it's going to fall, you know, and that's something that happened last year too. I think I only had two historicals in it and one of them was Sea of Ruin, which obviously that has a higher spice factor because it's like an indie published, like, it's pretty crazy. So I loved this. I loved rereading it. I even added a few more post-it notes to it. Kier and Mary just made my heart so happy. It was a completely pleasurable experience. Then at work today, I finished my reread of Bound to a Warrior. This was still so much fun. Um, it definitely is as I've said, I've said this in previous things too, like this was my like third uh, six star read of the year. Um, I was much freer with six stars at the beginning of the year as I feel like we all are with our ratings more free with them at the beginning of the year because I, I didn't have anything to compare them to. Like six stars were still kind of a new thing to me. So I read this, it made me laugh and cry and swoon and I was like, oh my gosh, this is a six star book. I would probably categorize this one more as like a four and a half or a five now. Does not change any of what I've said about it. It's still delightful and sweet, but I can understand why some of my friends who have picked this up because I said it was a six star book were like, oh, okay, well, I was expecting different than that. You know, it's still fun because it still is like such a beautiful story between these two. You know, they, they are captured by the king's men and they get shackled together to make it hard for them to run away and they jump off a cliff together they don't even know each other's names and they jump off a cliff together um and uh mercy the heroine she doesn't even know how to swim and she trusts this man that she's shackled to to help them get away and they're shackled together for a good part of this book like this shackle here this is not a tease like this is a consistent thing um, and I still say like if you like there are high stakes in this book But it's not written in a way where I was ever like overly stressed about it The hero is very alpha and protective, but he is completely respectful even when shackled to a naked woman and This is takes place in the year 1050, you know So it's not like he needed to be a great guy and he just is because he's Duncan McAlpin and he is delightful So this is still a super swoony book for me. It's still gonna be a historical. That's always at the top, but definitely did not uh, Rate as high especially when it's being read with all of my favorite historicals of the year You know if I had read this book, you know, cuz that's the thing if I had read dangerous and devil in disguise um before in the year, you know, like let's say I read those in January, gave those six stars, and then I read this book, this would have been a four and a half or a five star book. It would not have made it to a six star status, which the whole purpose for me of the six stars is so that I can give books like this a five star because I don't feel guilty, which is an arbitrary thing, I know, but I don't feel guilty of giving both Devil in Disguise and Bound by a Warrior a five star because I have a six star to delineate that like Goodreads is making me only go to five but Devil in Disguise is, is higher to me so this was still wonderful loved it but yeah it's 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 this one probably won't be in the top 10 that's for sure
So what's hot, what I'm reading next. So I have to squeeze in an arc that I'm almost done with. I have a mafia arc that the book comes out on Thursday and like I need to finish it and just get it out of the way. And I was supposed to do that last weekend, but I didn't want to. I wanted to be reading Carnal Urges and Still and Real and getting all up in my feels instead of getting that done. And so now I need to get that book out of the way. It's called Rise of the King by Bella Matthews is the name just in case you're wondering. And there is nothing wrong with it. It's actually a really unique setup. It's just not what I want to be reading because what I actually did is I actually added a couple of books to my spinner wheel <laughs> because I was like, wow, I'm doing so great. I'm getting done with these so quickly. And I forgot that some of the ones still on my spinner wheel are the thickest ones I have, particularly Annie's Song, which has a 15 hour audiobook, and Devil's Bride, which has a 14 hour audiobook. But it's okay. It's, it's, it's only Tuesday. We'll be all right. But I added um, Melissa and the Vicar to my spinner wheel because when I was looking up Minerva Spencer yesterday, Minerva Spencer is actually her pen name. Her name is S.M. La Violette. Well, her like La Violette is her last name. S.M. is her, you know. Um, and she actually writes a, a, like erotic historicals or much spicy historicals, even though dangerous is very spicy for a historical, by the way. Very good. And she has these books a series called the the seducers and very beautiful covers and they actually just got recovered and they're even they really convey that they are a spicy historical whereas before they had really like just cute cute covers which i'd looked at before and was like oh that looks fun the new cover bam i want to read this and so when i was looking her up yesterday um when i was looking up book quotes, I saw this recover and I was like, damn it. And it's called Melissa and the Vicar. And it is a world weary brothel owner, Melissa, who her health is not going great. And the doctor says, girl, you need to take a break. You're going to die. And so she goes to the country to relax and refresh. And she meets a country vicar who is younger than her and who is a virgin. And I don't need anything else. I'm ready. And it also, based on the reviews, is very spicy. So I'm sold. I put it into my spinner wheel and it chose this one. And I was like, well, I'm not mad. But this one doesn't have an audiobook. So tonight's the perfect time to do it. And then I will spin again and hopefully get one of the audiobooks. Even if I don't spin and get an audiobook, I'll probably pick one of the audiobooks next and do that tomorrow. So this was a way longer clip. Again, thank you to my friends for the gifts. You are too good to me. You're so sweet. Thank you so much. And oh God, I'm so happy. Oh, I'm so happy. So, okay, we'll Hi. be back later. Back in the same position, I know, but when I get home from work, this is what we got. So, it is now Thursday. I believe it's been since Tuesday when I checked in. <laughs> Something on my lens there. And, yeah, I've gotten quite a bit more reading done. I think I'm getting close, though, to kind of wrapping up with the historicals right now. I'm getting a little bit um, burned out with them, and um, that's not a good thing you know I talk quite a bit about like keeping myself from burnout and part of that is being willing to change it up um, and it's one of the reasons why doing a readathon that is a specific like subgenre, like historical romance can be difficult for me to do for too much and we do actually have um, at least one book to talk about that kind of mixed it up but we'll keep going and then I'll probably film like a wrap-up clip for this this weekend um, and I'll let you know if I did keep going, but I also wanted to put an updated like ranking score because I haven't showed one of those since the first vlog. Um, and so I want to show you where I'm at because I now, as of like this clip, I now have 13, I think I now have 13 of my rereads done, which is pretty cool. So the top books are definitely showing themselves. It's very exciting. So anyway, so the other books that I read that were part of the historical. So I ended up adding a couple books to my TBR and these ones obviously weren't rereads. So um, I will talk about them kind of quickly, but I ended up reading Melissa and the Vicar by S.M. La Violette. Um, this is also by Minerva Spencer. Um, she also writes under S.M. La Violette. This is Melissa, who is the like co-owner of a brothel and she is having some health issues so the doctor is like if you don't take a break you're gonna die it's not a matter of if it's a matter of when and so she does and so she takes one of her servants 
or one of the whores basically and they go to stay in this small village and in this small village there is a vicar um who they end up having a thing and he's a virgin but he is also the son of a of a pretty powerful man he he chooses to be in this life um he's not forced into it he's also not ultra religious like he's one where like he's not a virgin because he's taken a vow of celibacy but he does plan to you know not have sex till he finds the woman he loves like he has made that commitment he's not going to be celibate forever but he does want it to be within the bounds of matrimony because he believes that and melissa obviously is hiding a lot of secrets about who she is when she's there um there are a lot of men she's been with through her career where at the beginning she was actually forced to be a prostitute when she was like 14 she was sold to a man and when he was done with her it was like well what do i do now i can't just go back to normal life after this and she you know made her way as best she could so i really enjoyed this one i give it four stars i'll talk more about it in my regular wrap up then i also read a scoundrel of her own because all my friends were reading this one for the readathon um, or had already read this one and this is one I have an arc for this book comes out on December 28th It is the third book in I think this is called the wicked wallflowers I think is what this series is called but either way it totally could read as a standalone absolutely you could um, but this is the third book it's my darling duke and um, Her wicked Marquess Marquess and then yeah a scoundrel of her own this one is Oh, this one was just so cute. This is about Ophelia and um, Devlin. And they actually met when they were children when Ophelia fell into the river. And Devlin, so she was eight and he was 12, Devlin jumped in and saved her. And they end up getting kind of like lost and they come across, like he rescues her and they get lost and they come across this like old gamekeeper's cabin and they basically are there. And he's like taking care of her and feeding her and they become really good friends during this like week or a few days that they're stranded together and when they part each other Devlin promises that he's gonna marry his Fifi one day and then we fast forward 15 years and Ophelia is a um, woman who's kind of firmly on the shelf she is 24 years old and her father has actually recently just had a health scare and he shared with her that she is actually the daughter of his mistress and it was a mistress that he had when he first married his wife and then was still with her and so we find out that she's a not his full-blooded daughter and a big part of this plot is that she is trying to find her mother um so that's part of it and in doing that she's going undercover um, in different uh, situations, which I won't spoil. And then we have um, Devlin, who is this self-made man. He's made himself a lot of money. And in the very beginning of this book, he bumps in to his Ophelia after all these years, after thinking he would never find her again. He, when he's just about given up, when he has given up, he bumps into her one night and she doesn't know it's him, but he recognizes her. And so he goes about finding ways to be useful to her and to help her, um, as well as he's getting ready to reveal himself and to kind of make his move. So this was beautiful. This was a beautiful story. Um, I gave this one four and a half stars. Again, the reason kind of for not for the half star coming off, I'll talk more about in my weekly wrap up that I do, but it mostly had to do with some of the side plots in this. Um, the, uh, the romance guys is five out of five. Like it's, it's beautiful. It's beautiful romance. This is sexy. It's steamy. They have beautiful chemistry. The hero is very obsessed with her. My, and I don't want to say biggest issue, but like the little issue that I have that it's not a five out of five for me is that the author introduced a couple side things that seem to be, I know I said side things, but they are, they are main goals kind of for our heroine. And then there's also a conflict with her parents. And I don't feel like it had a resolution. I, I honestly feel like we just dropped it 
And I, I really wanted there to be satisfaction in that. And if there would have been, this could have been a six star book. I'm not even kidding. I could have been squeezing one in here right at the end of the year, but it just, some of those things just didn't click into place for me, even though the romance was great. And if you don't give a flying toot about those things coming into play, like you will absolutely love this book because Devlin is delightful. So yeah. Then I finally finished one of the other rereads and that was Never Seduce a Scott. I just finished this this morning while I was at work. This was still so wonderful. Um, obviously this one is Evelyn Armstrong and she is considered touched. She actually went deaf when she was younger. Um, and she, instead of correcting people or finding a way to communicate, she let them think she was mad because it got her out of getting married to this very abusive man who is a chameleon and was very good at hiding who he was, except he didn't hide it from her. Um, fast forward a few years and we have Graham Montgomery who the Montgomerys are at war with the Armstrongs and so the king orders them to have to marry. And since Eveline happens to not be wed, they make Graham wed her and he's very upset about this. He doesn't want to get married to someone who he believes is touched and who he believes um, he could never sleep with because he's like, well, she has the mind of a child. I'm never going to force myself on her and I'm never going to dishonor her by just sleeping with whoever I want. So basically I'm being cursed to be celibate and to not be able to continue my family line. And the king is basically punishing me for something and it's horrible. And then he meets Eveline and the romance is so beautiful. So I absolutely loved my reread of this. It was wonderful. I'm currently rereading um, Devil's Bride. I am halfway into this one. Um, I will say with this one, like just being honest, it does feel a little bit boring on the reread. A lot of things about this one that were so revelatory to me and so sensual and beautiful have lost their luster after reading. Like I've read seven books in this series and none of them held up as well as this one to me because there's a lot of, there's a lot of repetitive stuff. Okay. There's a lot of scenarios and attributes about the heroes and the heroines that are like cookie cutter shit. Okay. And while that would have worked for the times that they were coming out, it doesn't work as well now. And that's kind of my biggest issue with this. I am not, not enjoying myself, but I am finding myself skimming certain parts where the, these are definitely like mystery romances or like suspenseful historical romances. Like there's always a mystery or a crime or a murder that we're trying to solve. And that always takes up a huge part of the story. And I'm just, I was at work today and I was tuning it out. So I might need to skip to some of the spicy, spicy time, but, um, this is, I mean, it's still one of my favorite historicals of the year. And if I hadn't read seven other books by this author, like this was the first one and it hit me so good. And so I still want to try more of Stephanie Lawrence, like some of her other series, as well as I want to read about like some of the, the sinister sisters and stuff like that. So anyway, that is catching us all up to where we are right now. Um, I did get a package with my merch that I ordered for Sophie Lark. So I just wanted to show that off because I was holding off rereading these books until I got my merch. So I got my, um, Raylan sweater. So this says broken vow and then it says, take me to the barn. So it matches my, my mug that I got the other day. So I'm very excited. I'm going to wear this one right now. And then I had to order a Kingmaker mug. And of course I had to do Dean's Colors. So I got the Kingmakers Academy. This literally had, it has like the different colors of the book. So there's a green, um, what colors are they? Green, blue, um, green, blue, red, and pink are the colors. So Kingmaker Academy. And then it has where like they, they all like signed it. Like, I don't know if you did this in high school, but I have a senior class. Um, I have a senior class, uh, t-shirt where we did this. And so it has like, everybody has a little thing on the back. So I love that it says like class of 2021 as well, because that's when all the books came out. And I feel like it will be kind of this like staple in my reading life that I was a part of the crew reading Kingmakers as they came out. 
So yeah, I'm happy about that. But anyway, okay. So I will definitely still have a closing out clip. Whether I read more historicals or not, we'll let you know. But I will for sure still be doing rereads of things. I just may jump into some of my dark romances because as I said, I was getting just a little burned out with historicals. It does happen to the best of us. So anyway, all right, all right. chat later. As promised, let's wrap this reading vlog of rereading my favorite books. Number two up. So I'm not feeling super great today. Um, and I'm kind of bummed about it. It's Friday. Um, so I'm ending this. Is it a little bit early? Does it go till Saturday? I think it goes till Saturday. I don't know when it went to, but we're wrapping this up. My lipstick is totally coming off. So here's the lowdown. It's actually only like noon on a Friday. And I got dressed very nicely today. As you can tell by the lipstick that's coming off. And I wasn't feeling super great. I didn't sleep great last night. And sometimes that means that I might have a migraine. But also, sometimes it's just I didn't sleep super well. So I was like, got up, had my coffee, got into work, and I had that tingly feeling. It was a forward-facing one this time. Sometimes it's back here, sometimes it's up here. There are different kinds of headaches, different kinds of migraines. And I was like, you know, this isn't a high level one, but I have most of my work done for this week. I would literally just be sitting here reading a book today, which happens at my job. Like our busiest days are Monday through Wednesday. And then Thursday and Friday, there's a lot less for me to do. Um, and I just didn't want to have to be around the sounds and the smells. Um, we have a very strong air freshener at my work. And of course, when I have like a migraine, you know, you have like sensitivity to like light and sound and smell, uh, particularly the smell for me and just everything like smells so strongly. I know I'm like waiting about this, but I, I know that I have viewers who have like chronic pain and migraines and issues. So I'm just being real with you. And so it wasn't at a super bad level this morning, but I was like, you know what? I will just tell my boss that I need the time and it'll be fine, you know? And I messaged him and I was like, hey, or I mean, I went to his office, sorry, what am I saying? And I was like, hey, do you have any big projects you need me to do today? And he's like, no, I can find you some work. And I was like, no, that's not what I mean. I mean, um, I'm gonna go home. I have a headache and it could get, it could be a bad one. He's like, yeah, okay, you're cool. Forward your phone to somebody and go. And I was like, sweet. But it wasn't that bad. And I was kind of thinking, I was like, you know what? We'll just take it as an extra day because tomorrow, Saturday, when I do my bulk of filming, I have a Christmas party and I have some Christmas shopping I need to finish. Um, and I was like, we'll take this as an extra day, you know? And I should have known. I should have known that karma was coming for me for expecting that I could have an extra day to just chill. Because as I was getting home, I had to stop and pick something up. It was building. And ugh, it's the kind that it's like once it grips, I'm just like fucked. So for the last four hours, I've just sat there and like over there and just haven't moved. But I did finish listening to The Devil's, the Devil's Bride. So there's the front. This is the one I have the pretty step back for. And this was the last book that I was going to finish for this vlog anyway. Um, I am feeling slowly better, which I like wish I felt all the way better because it'd be great to like film some of my like videos I have planned to film. But I was like, no, we'll just stick with the vlogging um, because I can be more just like Bleh, when I vlog. Not that I'm not like that all the time, but I just feel more comfortable about it when it's a vlog because people who watch vlogs are the people that want to hang out with you. You know what I mean? Those people are your people. But I still feel pretty good about this vlog. I think I read... How many did I read for this one? I think I read five or six for this one. Um, once I put the score in for this one, I will put an updated thing over my face in a second. If you don't remember, here, let me scoot over, from the last vlog, because um, I don't think I mentioned it in this one, I'm rating these off of five things, and here's the little chart of what I'm rating these. Each thing can get 10 points for a total of 50 points for each book. And then that is kind of how I'm helping myself place these. It is arbitrary to a certain point because like sometimes a book 
won't really stand out in one of these categories at all. So then I kind of give it like a six or a seven because obviously these are all books that I loved. They're all books that I gave six stars. It's when we start comparing them to each other to try to find my favorites that things get really interesting. So anyway, there's 50 points possible. Um, in vlog number one, if you didn't, if you didn't watch that, like I showed you where the standing was at for that one. So I'll show you where we're at with this one. I will have it over my face right now. Probably. I think I've read, I think this one is the 14th one. I'm not sure. This is where we're at with everything. Um, yeah. So I'm feeling really, really good about it, especially like the top three in this. I really feel strongly about those. Um, I am a little bit burned out with historicals right now. I think I said that in the last clip, which is fine. I mean, you guys know this. I've shared this. Like one of the ways I keep myself from having reading slumps is that I don't read the same subgenre for very long. Like unless I am um, like speeding through a series where I'm totally hooked into it, you know, like I did with Elisa Braden, where that's all that I want to read, is that I mix it up. And so this week, I did a lot of historicals in a row. I even, I did slip in a couple other things, which was helpful. But when I was finishing this one, I definitely, part of it is also that my head felt like it was going to explode. Still does a little bit. But part of it too is just like, okay, okay, we get it. We're getting to the end of this, you know, and I don't want to be feeling that when I'm rereading my favorites. So that's why I'm bouncing back and forth between everything. Anyway, we are all aware of my eccentricities at this point. So what I'm really going to do next, I'm going to finish this clip up. Um, I will probably do a clip to start the next one. So if you are watching these all in a row or something, you'll see my cute shirt again, which I guess I didn't show. I ordered this from Fugly Barbie actually ordered Christmas presents for some friends from Fugly, Fugly Barbie this year. I'm very excited. But I'm wearing my romance novels are my therapy because that's what I'm feeling today. I was going to wear my Brutal Birthright sweater um, and read Broken Vow, but I'm just uh, not feeling that one today. I wanted to wear this one because this one is like a bit like bigger and comfier. I bought the Broken Vow one in a size smaller than I meant to, which it still fits me, but it's it's more of like a like a sweater I'll wear when I'm filming because it's cute. Whereas like this one, I mean, this is a cute sweater. This one is like lots of room. And so I can like curl up on my couch and I don't feel constricted by it at all. You know what I mean? Um, I don't know what I'm even rambling about at this point. But anyway, plan is I'm going to wrap up this vlog with you guys, start the new one. And then I'm going to read, I'm going to try to read some of the shorter ones that I have. I'm going to read A Lesson in Blackmail. I want, I probably will do a Sophie Lark. I have Run, Posey, Run. And then I want to start an audio for maybe Sarah J. Mass, maybe, because that one's long. Um, but I don't know. So I do still have two historicals that I need to read for the end of the year, but We'll have to see when I get to those. Um, they also are historicals that I read really recently. So if I don't end up having time to reread those ones, it'll be okay. So anyway, let's wrap this up. Like I said, thank you so much for joining me for another vlog, uh, rereading my favorites. This has been so much fun. You guys have really reacted well to the first one I put out. So I'm excited to see how this one does as well. And it was really fun to do this with the historical romance readathon. Like honestly, it was a great time. And yeah. Thank you so much for watching. I put up new videos three to four times a week. So make sure you're subscribed to the channel so you get updated when I do that. Have a great day, everybody. Bye.